3. The History of Color Therapy The history of color medicine, or chromotherapy, dates back to ancient Egypt, Greece, China and India. Thoth, an ancient Egyptian god, is credited with discovering the art of chromotherapy in ancient Egyptian times. In the ancient Egyptian and Greek medical traditions, coloured minerals, ground stones, crystals, salves, oils and plants were used as cures and treatment sanctuaries were painted in various hues of colour. One of these can be seen today at the Temple of Hendra in Egypt. Whilst they might not have understood the scientific facts about using colour as medicine, they had a strong belief in the power of colour and light to heal and created beautiful painted light chambers adorned with different coloured crystals. There is evidence of ancient Egyptian colour therapy stretching back to 1550 BCE in the form of colour cures that are listed on papyrus, which makes the Egyptians the forefathers of today's modern colour therapy practice. Ancient Ayurvedic Indian practices dating from the 6th century combined the healing powers of light with the elements of taste, sour, sweet, salty, pungent and astringent, with sunshine or light bathing recommended in the treatment of a wide range of ailments. In the canon of medicine, Avicenna studied chromotherapy, considering colour as crucial both in diagnosis and treatment. Colour is an observable indicator of the disease, he stated, and he created a chart that linked colour to body temperature and physical condition. Red circulated the blood, blue or white cooled it, and yellow was used to relieve muscular discomfort and inflammation. As we step forward to 1800, General Augustus Pleasanton of the American Civil War conducted his own tests and released the influence of the blue ray of the sunlight and of the blue colour of the sky, showing how the colour blue may help crops and livestock flourish as well as heal ailments in humans. This influenced scientists Pankost and Babbitt to undertake research and write blue and red light or light and its rays as medicine and the principles of colour and light respectively which led to current chromotherapy. As we jump forward to the 20th century, scientist Gadali found out why and how different colour rays have different therapeutic effects on the body. His book, The Spectrochrome Encyclopedia, is thought to be the first to explain the whole idea of chromotherapy, and many modern-day chromopaths still use his method. Gadiali found that a unique colour or energy vibration can either calm down or stimulate the flow of energy through a certain organ which in turn caused a natural biochemical reaction. The body's organs and systems respond to different colours in different ways. Knowing this, one can apply the right colour to any organ or system that isn't working the way it should be. When this balance is out, both mental and physical problems happen. Using colour healing, a person can get better by making sure that all the colours in their body are in the right balance. Gadali also claimed to have figured out why and how distinct coloured photons have varying therapeutic effects on different creatures. He believed that colours show chemical potencies in higher octaves of vibration and each organ and system of the body has a specific colour that stimulates or stops the organ or system from working. He also believed that by understanding the effects of various colours on various organs and systems of the body, one could apply the appropriate colour to help balance the activity of any organ or system that has become abnormal in its function or state. Colour healers claimed that tinted glass filters could treat a variety of ailments, including constipation and meningitis during the 19th century. Some studies in the 1950s showed that neonatal jaundice a condition that at that time could kill two-thirds of premature babies, could be treated by exposure to sunlight. This became common practice in the 1960s, and white light was used instead of high-risk blood transfusions to treat this condition. As time went on, it became clear that blue light was more effective and less dangerous than full-spectrum light, which was the most common form of treatment for neonatal jaundice. Bright 
white full spectrum light is now also being used to treat SAD or seasonal affective disorder, anorexia, bulimia nervosa, insomnia, jet lag, shift work, alcohol and drug abuse, and to cut down on overall medication levels. As light therapy has progressed into the 21st century, we now have photodynamic light therapy, or PDT for short. According to the American Cancer Organization, photodynamic therapy is a treatment that uses special drugs, sometimes called photosensitizing agents, along with light to kill cancer cells. The drugs only work after they have been activated or turned on by certain kinds of light. Depending on the part of the body being treated, the photosensitizing agent is either put into the bloodstream through a vein or put on the skin. Over a certain amount of time, the drug is absorbed by the cancer cells. Then light is applied to the area to be treated. The light causes the drug to react and form a special kind of oxygen molecule that kills the cells. PDT might also help by destroying the blood vessels that feed the cancer cells and by alerting the immune system to attack the cancer. The light used in PDT comes from certain kinds of lasers or from light emitting diodes, LEDs as we call them. The kind of light used depends on the cancer and where it is located in the body. We now see colour therapy being used in all walks of life, with athletes, for example, being given exposure to red lights as it has been shown to help them release short, quick bursts of energy for sprinting. Whereas blue light exposure is given to athletes who need a steady amount of energy, i.e. think marathon runners. Pink light, on the other hand, has a calming and tranquilizing effect after just a few minutes of exposure. It is used to stop people from behaving in a hostile, aggressive or anxious way. Pink holding cells are now used to try to stop violent and aggressive behaviour in prison. And some sources say that inmates lose muscle strength after just 2.7 seconds of being in them. It seems that when people are in pink surroundings, they can't be angry, even if they want to be, because the colour takes away that aggressive energy.